Now let's go back to the design window and the thing that we actually want to do now. So once you are in the preview window, if you look at the data, okay, then you have these product categories, okay. Now there's a fixed set of product categories and it might happen that a new product category has been added to and to a retailer, to retail uh, store. So when I send this report to the users, we cannot expect them to know the whole list of the uh, products or even if they know them, the easier way for them to do uh, would be to be able to select it from a drop-down list. All right. And I want some values for that drop-down list. So that is what I'm trying to, I'm going to try to do now. I'm going to change this parameter of product category so that the users have an option to select the value from a drop down list instead of having to go and type the value over here. Okay. So let's head back to the design view and go to our parameter that we created for product category and try to change it. Now, what are the other values, other options that I have over here? I have something called the available values, so I can give them a list of available values and they can choose from that. So if you click on available values, you can specify your values if you want. So you can keep on adding the values. So let's say I say bikes. Okay. And I can add another thing called clothing. Okay, and so on. So let's say okay. Let's go back to the preview. And now you can see that I've got a drop down over here. If I click on it, I have the option to select either bikes or clothing. And now I'll get all the options for the category bikes, all the records for the category bikes and which have the word mountain in them. So this is how we can create a drop down and let your users choose from a set of values. Now go back to the design view. Now the set of values, we do not really want it to be typed manually. We want it to be dynamic. So as the product category is changing in the database, we want the values to be available uh, the values that are available for this parameter to change as it changes in the database. So we do not want to go manually and do it every time. So what we can do for that is we have to create a data set that contains a list of all the product categories that we want to show in our report. So what we do, we go back to the data sets, okay, add a new data set. Make it embedded, select a data source, go to the query designer, and then what I want is all the product categories. So I go to the my dim product table, select my product key, then I go to my product subcategory table, select my product subcategory key. And then I go to my product category table from where I would want the real value. So I select my key column as well as my English product category name column. I want all those values to be there. And let's say OK. And let's call it DS product category. And let's do an OK over here. Now what I need to do, I want to redirect the output of the data set that I have just created to this parameter so that all the values that are coming in the output of this data set gets populated as the available values in this parameter. So I would change the properties of this, go back to available values, and instead of adding these values, delete, delete, I select the other option that is get values from a query. All right. Now, when you select this option and ask you to select the data set, 
So we just created the data set called the product category. Select that. It asks you to select your value field. So I'm going to select my key column as a value field. So value field is what would be stored in the background. All right. So the value in my within my internal to my report would be product category key. But what the user would see is the English product category name. Okay, because that is what we want to show to the user. Let's say okay. Okay, let's go to preview. And now if we click on this drop down, we have all these lists for all those categories. And you can see that the values are repeating because it has taken all the values from all the records. So as many times as it has appeared in the data, it has put that value in the drop down. So we do not want that. So what we will be doing now is going back to our data set, to our data set properties and putting, adding a distinct over here. Okay, let's say okay and do a preview. Okay, so it hasn't changed our issues. So let's go back to the design view, go back to our product category data set. And this hasn't worked and it is for obvious reasons because we have selected multiple columns over here and that's why it's not able to do a distinct on that. What we want is the product category key and the subcategory key because we're selecting the product category, not the subcategory key, the product category key and the product category name. So just remove these two additional columns that we had added earlier. And now we should be able to get unique values. So, okay, preview. And now you have got your unique values, bikes, components, clothing, accessories, and so on. So if you now select bikes and say, okay, let's select some other thing. Let's select clothing, right? And give a word like G and view report. Also, we have nothing with J in clothing. Okay, let's select bikes only because we know what is inside it. Say mountain. And your view report. Okay, so now we are not getting any data. And why is that? So, because, let's go back to the design view and see what we have done for this new filter that we have created. So this was a filter product category. Let's double click on it. And go to our available values. What we are saying is get values from a query and we have directed it to a data set called product category. Now in the value field, we have collected the product category key. And in the label field, it is a product category name which is shown or displayed in the report. But if you observe here that in the value field, you have the product category key, we could have given the English product category name as well. Let's do that and see how it matters. Go back to the preview. Select bikes, the word mountain in them. And now I have the data, okay? So why did that happen, go back to the design view, is because in the report data, that which is the data set for the main report data, let's go back to the data set properties, we have added a filter that says that wedding product category, English product category name is the value of a parameter product category or product category is, is null. But what we are returning now is the product category key. So if I select this, 
instead of the descriptive columns, I select my key column. All right, say OK. And now within my parameters, I go back to the available values and in the value field, I select my key column as well. And do an OK. And now if I do a preview, and select my product category again as bikes and the product as anything having the word mountain in it and view report i'm able to see the results okay because i had changed the value field to the key column and in my report data set i was doing a lookup on the category name now what is the advantage of changing it to the key column is basically that now in my data set for the report i am doing a where clause on a key column anything done on a key column is obviously faster than anything done on a descriptive at attribute column because on the key columns, mostly you'll be having your indexes built. So any kind of joins, any kind of operations done on the key columns would obviously be much faster than any operations done on the non-key columns. Okay, so that is the advantage of doing this.